Dimensional analysis, quick review. Dimensional analysis is going to make use of conversion factors. And conversion factors are a way of writing an equality. Okay, so we're going to say that one thing is equal to another. For example, if we want to talk about uh, time, time, uh, 60 seconds, is equal to one minute. We can also say that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. It doesn't matter. They're both, equal, they're both equalities. So you could technically say 60 seconds per minute. So let's go ahead and write some conversion factors dealing with time. The first one we have is 60 seconds equals one minute. So what we do is we can take our first value, 60 seconds, and put it over one minute. Our other, our second equality says that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So the way we can write this is flip it so that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Each conversion factor says the same thing, but it's represented different and we can use either, either conversion factor based on what we want to cancel. So using dimensional analysis, let's convert 37 minutes to seconds. Well, we're going to take use of our conversion table, and we take our given. We're given 37 minutes. So we take our given and plug it in to our first spot, 37 minutes. Now, it's just 37 minutes. There's nothing underneath. Well, our two conversion factors are 60 seconds in one minute, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Well, we want to convert two seconds, so we want seconds on top. We have minutes here, so we need minutes on the bottom. So our conversion factor is 60 seconds in one minute. So to solve this, we take 37 times 60, divided by 1, and we get 2,220 seconds. Remember, moving across a line like this means to multiply. Moving down a line means to divide. Let's take a look at another example. How many meters are there in 15 centimeters? Well, we're given 15 centimeters, and there's nothing on the bottom. Here, we know the relationship of 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. So what we'll do here is we want centimeters to cancel. We want our unit meters. So we're going to put 1 meter over 100 centimeters. 1 meter goes on top. 100 centimeters goes on the bottom. So we multiply across and divide down. So we have 15 times 1 divided by 100, or 0 0.15 meters as an answer. So let's take a look at a problem with multiple steps. 0 0.375 liters. Again, our given goes in the first spot. 0 0.375 liters. We don't have anything on the bottom. Well, now here we don't have a conversion factor. We don't have an equality that relates liters directly into fluid ounces. Because remember, at the end, we want fluid ounces at the end. So what we are going to do is take a look at our first equality, 1.06 quarts. So we'll put 1.06 quarts on the top and one liter on the bottom. Liters on top, liters on the bottom, they cancel out. Our second equality, 32 fluid ounces in one quart, can be inputted here. 32 fluid ounces, one quart, and now we can do quarts on top, quarts on the bottom, so they cancel, leaving our unit that we want as fluid ounces. So we take 0 0.375 times 1.06 times 32, and we get 12.72 fluid ounces. Again, remember, we're going to multiply across, 
divide down. Multiply up, divide down. Let's take a look at derived units. A derived unit is, some, is something like density where we have two units in one thing. So what would the density of 0 0.50 milliliters, here's our object, here's our given, 0 0.50 milliliters, if the mass is 1.22 grams per milliliter? Well, 1.22 grams per milliliter, 1.22 grams is our, un is our number with our unit. So we'll put 1.22 grams on the top. Milliliters all by itself means that in that's equal to 1 milliliter. So milliliters on the top, milliliters on the bottom, they cancel out. So 0.5 times 1.22 means that this object would be 0 0.61 grams because grams is the only unit we have left. Let's try another one. 55 miles per hour. Now, notice here our given is slightly different. In this case we have 55 miles and again, we see that slash per, meaning to divide. So we'll put hours on the bottom. And in this case, there's one because there's no number between the slash and our unit hours. We know that one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. So we point one. Sorry, we put one mile on the bottom because we want miles to cancel out and 1.61 kilometers on the top. When we do the math and we look at our units, miles have canceled out. So our units we're left with are kilometers on top and hours on the bottom, which is what we want. So we can take our 55 times 1.61 so 55 kilometers an hour is 88.55 kilometers over one hour or 88.5, sorry, 88.55 kilometers per hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. 25 miles an hour is how many feet per second? So again, we start with 25 miles per one hour. But now we have to convert both miles to feet and hours to seconds. So let's deal with the first thing first. We know that one mile equals 5,280 feet. So we'll put one mile on the bottom. 5,280 feet on the top. Miles cancels out and we're left with our unit that we want on top. See here we have feet on top, so we have feet on top in our problem. Now it's time to convert hours to seconds. Well, I don't know how many hours are, or how many seconds are in an hour, but I do know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. In this case, the unit that I have I want to get rid of is hours that's on the bottom, so I'm going to put one hour on the top. Now it'll cancel, leaving me with, and I'll put 60 minutes, on the bottom. From here I know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So again, I have the unit that I want to get rid of on the bottom, minutes, so I have to put minutes on the top. So one minute is 60 seconds. So now again, here I'm going to divide down, multiply up, divide down, 
multiply up, divide down, multiply up, and divide down. So 25 divided by 1 times 5,280 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 60 times 1 divided by 60. And this then gives me 36.7 feet per second.